All rise, ladies and gentlemen. Announcing the arrival of Her Excellency Madam Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO, accompanied by the Vice Chancellor of the University of Malaya, Sri Dr. Gauss Jasmon, and the Director of the Center for Civilizational Dialogue of the University of Malaya, Associate Professor Dr. Raihana Haji Abdullah. A very good morning, and may I extend our warm welcome to our guest of honor, Her Excellency Madam Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO, the Vice Chancellor of the University of Malaya, Sansri Professor Dr. Gauss Jasmon, Deans, Directors, Professors, Lecturers, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen. On behalf of the University of Malaya, I would like to extend our heartiest gratitude to Her Excellency for being here. Indeed, it is a great pleasure and honor to have you with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, I would also like to welcome all of you to this program, a public lecture entitled The New Humanism in the 21st Century the role of good governance and education in empowering the society, which will be delivered by Her Excellency Madam. This program is organized by the Center for Civilizational Dialogue, University of Malaya, in collaboration with the Ministry of Education and UNESCO Club, UNESCO Club University of Malaya. I am very sure that there are many good things that we can get from this lecture. Now, I would like to call upon Associate Professor Dr. Raihana Haji Abdullah, the Director for Civilizational Dialogue, to give a welcoming speech and to introduce Her Excellency. Please welcome Dr. Raihana. <clears throat> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Dr. Zalina. Yang berusaha Tan Sri Gauss Jasmun, Naib Chancellor University Malaya Puan yang terutama Puan Irina Boha, pengarah UNESCO Para div-div kehormat dan tetamu jemputan yang dimuliakan dari Kementerian Pengajian Kementerian Pelajaran dan agensi-agensi lainnya Warga UM yang dikasih seluruhnya, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera and peace be upon you dengan izin, mohon untuk saya meneruskan ucapan saya pada pagi ini dalam bahasa Inggeris. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it is with our great honour that I welcome every one of you here for the public lecture entitled The New Humanism in the 21st Century, the role of good governance and education in empowering the society. Similarly, it is my utmost pleasure to welcome and introduce you, our distinguished speaker of the day, Her Excellency Madam Irina Bokova, the Director General of UNESCO. My simple wish is that in our own small way, our gathering here contributes towards global peace initiatives from right here in this Syrian Auditorium of University of Malaya, Kuala Lumpur. Ladies and gentlemen, many describe the globalization process as having positive results on millions of people. It has been thought to increase job opportunities, especially in developing countries, help to decrease the poverty line, and also open up more economic and political opportunities. However, the globalizing force that has swept through the world also unearthed many humanitarian issues that seriously require the attention. As we may know already, the Millennium Development Goals, that is MDG, program brought to light to other challenges to humanity, especially in the most vulnerable countries. The eight prongs of the MDG proved that it affected the innate nature and behavior of human beings, with education being at the core of it all. Knowledge is the ultimate power, and the MDG helped in addressing the purpose and meaning of life in the younger generations 
and provide a channel for them to perform their social responsibilities through educational empowerment. As global governance becomes a major challenge to create a world where values of human dignity and human rights are realized and where people may gain equal access to education, culture, economic and political opportunities, UNESCO as the global intellectual and humanistic organizations is giving greater emphasis and focus on good governance. A just and democratic community can only enhance the individual competitiveness of youth and empowerment within a particular community. As such, all of us have a role to play in the dawn of this new humanism. While global governance has become more complex, it has also become more important than ever for humankind. The human cause in areas of the world, such as Palestine and Syria, can never be ignored if we aim to achieve peace at the global level. Ladies and gentlemen, UNESCO, under the leadership of Her Excellency, Madam Irina Bokova, advocates humanistic ideas among the international community through quality education. She defined quality as empowering the younger generations with realizing the meaning of life, basic rights, and encouraging social mobility. The cleansing of mankind from evil and destructive forces is a major objective. It is worthy to note that she introduced five lines of actions during the 181st sessions of the Executive Board of UNESCO to attain new humanistic ideas, which summarizes in the following. UNESCO, first, UNESCO needs to prioritize politically committed mode, taking into account crisis ramifications and impact. Secondly, UNESCO should play the role as leaders and mobilizers of governments, specialized agencies, and scientific community in the field of science, innovations, and novel, including green technologies. Third, UNESCO should consider culture as an integral aspect of sustainable development. Fourth, increasing development aid. And finally, equal opportunities for women and elevating their role in the society. Ladies and gentlemen, on the other hand, the University of Malaya Center for Civilizational Dialogue, or normally we call it as UMCCD, believed in taking another approach that is a discourse approach. In a multicultural society of the world, this method believed that through dialogue, mankind might be able to read evil and destructive forces in order to create a peaceful world where human dignity and human rights are revered. In this regard, the MCCD is agreeable with UNESCO and is convinced that global peace is achievable and only possible through quality educations for the younger generations to fully realize the meaning of life and social responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, in light of future collaborations between the two entities, UNESCO and University of Malaya, seeds of four cooperations have already been sown. We have in UM established the UM UNESCO Club in 2007. The establishment was made in line with a call for the National UNESCO Council for institutions of higher education to enhance the quality of higher education in Malaysia. Now I will describe a little background about the UM UNESCO Club. It is with pride for me to mention that UM UNESCO Club, or here in after referred to as UMUK, is the first of its kind in Malaysia. Later, other institutions of higher learning followed in path initiated by University of Malaya. The UMUK is under the patronage of University of Malaya Center for Civilizational Dialogue, and the club's motto is in the spirit of togetherness. The membership of UMUK is approximately 200 members, and it continues to expand. Next, I will introduce the current office bearers for the UMUK. As I call their names and positions, the office bearers will kindly stand up and come up to the stage so that we all could see you. The first, the presidents of the um, University of Malaya UNESCO Club, Ms. Colin chong yu -Kiat. The vice president is Ms. Mashita Binti Osman,
And the secretary is Izni Shafinas Binti Zulkafli. These are the backbones of the University of Malaya um, uh, UNESCO Club. Okay. And uh, I invite everybody in this auditorium to give them a very big round of applause. <laughs> Congratulations and thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, ever since its inception in 2007, the University of Malaya UNESCO Club have actively organized and engaged in activities that promote the enhancements of quality education through the sharing of information, ideas, culture, the awareness of sustainable environment, and how technology affects the daily life of mankind. Not limited to local activities, the UMUK had engaged in activities abroad in the spirit of cultural exchange and in the effort to broaden the horizons of club members. Some of the events that the UMUK had organized throughout the years are World Philosophy Day that the club celebrates every year, Environmental Awareness Program, the Global Youth Symposium in 2008, the Peace Pole, Kinabalu Expedition in Sabah, International United Nations Day, Cultural Exchange Program with Cornell University in 2010 and also 2012. Earth Hour 2010, Umuk Exhibitions and Eco Film Fest, UNESCO Day Malaysia in 2011, and also International Seminar commemorating UNESCO World Philosophy Day. Other activities have also been organized, but it is not mentioned here today solely because of the temporal and spatial limitations. We might say that UNESCO and UMCCD are partners in peace and harmony having the same goal and objective in the effort to create a better world. As a tradition in Malaysia, we normally have a appreciations uh, of, um, uh, or acknowledgements of um, a Malay traditional. We call it as a pantun. So before I end my speech, I would like to read a pantun, where later I will translate the pantun. Padi dan nenas tanam di Tanjung, Tempat pipit berbuat sarang. Budi dan emas sentiasa dijunjung. Hidup aman dikenang orang. The translation would be, Rice and pineapple grows along the coast. A place where house sparrow nets. So my VC is laughing at me, I think. Although favours and gold are highly prized, peaceful coexistence is what people covet. I will end my speech with a little reflections from Ralph Waldo Emerson, who once said that peace cannot be achieved through violence. It can only be attained through understanding. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, and thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Raihana. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we are coming to the most important part of our program today. It is now my pleasure to invite our guest of honor, Her Excellency Madam, to deliver the lecture entitled, The New Humanism in the 21st Century, The Role of Good Governance and Education in Empowering the Society. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, Her Excellency Madam Irina Bokova. Mr. Vice-Chancellor, Madam Director of the Center for Intercivilizational Dialogue, Excellencies, uh, dear professor and students, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I am extremely honored to be here today, and I would like first and foremost to thank you, Mr. Vice-Chancellor, and you, Madam Director, for this wonderful presentation, and to congratulate these young people, committed young people, from the UNESCO Club of the University of Malaya, and also for the message of peace, of understanding and tolerance. And I would probably like to start by this, I would say, magic word that 
peace has not been achieved by violence, but by understanding. And I think this message here at the University of Malay, which is a world-class institution of higher education, a place of cutting-edge research and teaching excellence, is very powerful, because these are exactly the way to peace and to understanding. As the motto of the university declares, knowledge is the source of progress. Your university is dedicated to creating and sharing knowledge, to opening young minds for the benefit of all society. Your mission statement puts this eloquently, to advance knowledge and learning through quality research and education for the nation and for humanity. I think this is a powerful message in a globalized world where there are challenges, but also huge opportunities. UNESCO stands with you in this mission, which I see as the ethical foundation of higher education in the 21st century. Universities have strategic importance for every country today as key actors providing women and men with tools to shape change together. And I think you, Madam Director, spoke about togetherness in the direction of their aspirations and for the public good. This is a humanist vision, and it is one that lies at the heart of UNESCO's mandate. UNESCO's constitution opens with the following words. Since wars begin in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the defenses of peace must be constructed. Written after the devastation of the World War II, these words reflected the conviction that peace had to be built in new ways, upon the intellectual and moral solidarity of mankind, as it is written also in our Constitution. This vision is as relevant today as it was then, perhaps even more so, at a time when societies face rising pressures, when the impact of climate change is deepening, when a range of global challenges call for urgent common action. The global economic crisis in many parts of the world is a jobs crisis, and young people are shouldering the heaviest burden. At the same time, our societies are more diverse than ever, but intolerance also in some parts of the world is on the rise, and the question of social inclusion is becoming essential. These are difficult times, but they offer also vast opportunities for positive change. Connection and exchanges have never been so rich. We are developing powerful new ways to share knowledge and to express ourselves, to express our identities. We must not allow an economic and financial crisis that some consider a crisis of means to become a crisis of opportunities and imagination. Far from resisting change, we must embrace it together to shape it in positive directions. This is what I mean by calling for a new humanism. This is really an appeal to invest in the dignity and capabilities of every woman and man. We need today a new humanism rooted in a profound respect for human dignity, fundamental rights, and the diversity of cultures. We need a new vision of development where every woman and man feels a sense of responsibility towards others and for the safeguarding of our planet. A new humanism must contribute to harmonious relations between all regions in a world where societies are connected. This is why the development of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations is so important with the perspective of building a unified community on three pillars, security, economic, 
and social, socio-cultural. This is a vision of a region that is dynamic, open and cooperative, that is peaceful and deeply integrated into the world. In this new age of limits, I see human imagination and creativity as our ultimate renewable energy. But so much of it today is untapped or stimmed. We must make far more of the boundless opportunities of ingenuity to release the powers of innovation, creativity, to craft new solutions that are inclusive, just, and sustainable. Making this vision real starts on the benches of schools, and it is taken forward in the auditoria of universities. Countries cannot develop fully if they only focus on the economy, if parts of society are left behind, if the future is mortgaged against short-term gains. This is a key message also of the 2013 Human Development Report on the rise of the South, driven by new trade and technology partnerships within the South itself. To be meaningful, to be sustainable, development must be equitable and inclusive. It must be balanced and holistic. I see this as a strength of Malaysia's vision 2020. The four pillars of vision 2020, one Malaysia, people first, performance now, and the new economic model are an ambitious agenda to foster inclusive and equitable development as the basis of higher growth. This is a vision of more sustainable society, more resilient society, where all move forward together, where the economy, society, and culture develop in harmony. Education, ladies and gentlemen, is the most powerful way to integrate all dimensions of this agenda. Education is a basic human right that is essential to individual dignity. And this is our store starting point. It also brings sustainability to all development as a force for positive transformation, as a motor for economic success. The facts speak for themselves. According to UNESCO estimates, Every one dollar you spend on a child's education yields 10 to 15 dollars in economic growth over that person's working lifetime. Education is a life multi multiplier, and on a planet under pressure, it is the best way to shape new ways of thinking and acting to build societies able to adapt to change. These are the key objectives of the Global Education for All campaign that UNESCO is leading. We stand today less than 1,000 days from the 2015 deadline. There has been tremendous progress with impressive improvement in enrollment in primary education, with a narrowing of gender gap in formal education. This is positive, but we are still far off track. UNESCO's 2012 Global Monitoring Report of Education for All shows progress is slowing. There are still 61 million children and 71 million adolescents out of school, and the same number we had it also in 2008. As UNESCO's World Atlas of Gender Equality in Education demonstrates, girls are especially affected. There are today 32 million girls out of primary school and a similar amount out of secondary school. Women represent two-thirds of the world's adult illiterate population of 775 million. I see this situation as a call to action, and so does Malaysia. Action to place education first on the political agenda, action to give every child and adult the skills 
they need to make the most of all opportunities. This calls for strong national education systems. It means starting early by providing access to quality early childhood care and education. It means ensuring no girl and boy is left behind, whatever their origin or ethnicity, wherever they live. Less than three years away from 2015, deadline of education for all, we need a new global push on education. This is the goal of United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's Global Education First Initiative, launched last September, which UNESCO is steering forward. Our aim is to put education at the top of the political agenda, to ensure every child gets to school and the right learning, and to foster new forms of global citizenship. Experience shows what political will, strong policies, and adequate resources can do. And I believe Malaysia is a powerful example to this. UNESCO has worked with the government very closely as part of our Malaysia UNESCO cooperation program to undertake the Malaysian Education Policy Review. The recommendations of the policy review have been incorporated into Malaysia Education Blueprint 2013-2025, as they focus on overcoming bottlenecks in reaching all girls and boys on the quality of learning, on ICT literacy. To these ends, the Education Blueprint seeks to ensure equality of access, to enhance the quality of learning, to transform the teaching profession, to harness the power of new technologies, and to forge new pa partnerships, including with the private sector. The Government of Malaysia is not resting on its laurels and is committed to making the most of inclusive quality education. UNESCO will provide full support to this agenda, which carries rich experience for other countries. Education policy is the ultimate long-term policy. It must be visionary, it must be strategic. I believe we need to rethink the fundamentals of education at this time, when the world is changing profoundly. We need to educate for sustainable future. Globalization, ladies and gentlemen, is accelerating. There has been tremendous growth, but also deepening inequalities. The need to learn to live together has never been more urgent. Almost one fourth of all countries may be considered nowadays as fragile states, in or emerging from conflicts and undergoing political transition. The world is getting younger every day, and the expectations of young people are rising for decent jobs, for dignified lives. The world is changing, and education must change too. It is changing in Malaysia and in the region, and we must take this further here and across the world. And I take it very positively that it is under the auspices of the University of Malaysia that a center for inter-civilization dialogue is been working and also it is leading the work of the UNESCO club. This is the leadership today that we know, that we want, and this is also the humanistic approach that I, I congratulate and I also would like to cooperate with. We need nowadays that every woman and man needs new skills, to withstand the pressures of this change, but also to make the most of its opportunities. This is why UNESCO is rereading past landmark education reports, the 1972 Learning to Be, the Four report, and the 1996 report, the Delors report, Learning the Treasures Within. We want to craft an ambitious global agenda for education to follow 2015. 
as the international community shapes a new global development agenda to follow 2015, the deadline for the Millennium Development Goals, we must make the most of the power of education. This future agenda must start with equity to ensure every can exercise, everyone can exercise the right to education, to training, to learning opportunities. It must focus then on quality to ensure the right learning for the right skills. Enrollment is not enough nowadays. We must bolster the numbers and the skills of teachers to harness the power of information and communication technologies. And it must finally promote global citizenship to strengthen peace and human rights education, to shape new behaviors for sustainability, to give cultural literacy so much needed today. This requires a sharper focus on education for creativity, education for global solidarity, education for sustainable development. This is UNESCO's contribution to shaping a new post-2015 development agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, in all of this, UNESCO works shoulder to shoulder with Malaysia. In 2011, Malaysia started to celebrate 3rd November every year as Hari UNESCO Malaysia or UNESCO Day. This is a day to recognize the importance of education, the sciences, culture and communication and information. This is also a day to celebrate Malaysia's leading place in UNESCO. For more than five decades, your country has been one of UNESCO's great champions inside the organization and across the world. The achievements of Malaysia testify to a belief in the power of education and culture and intercultural dialogue. They highlight Malaysia's commitment to safeguarding the sharing of its rich history and cultural diversity. This includes the Gunung Mulu and the Kinabulu parks, the historic sites and cities of Melaka and Georgetown, and the archaeological heritage of the Langong Valley. Malaysia is also deeply committed to harnessing the power of sciences for sustainable development and for advancing science, technology, and innovation through South-South cooperation. Malaysia nowadays hosts two leading UNESCO regional science centers, the regional Humid Tropics Hydrology and Water Resources Center, and the International Center for Science, Technology, and Innovation for South-South Cooperation, whose fifth anniversary we are celebrating tomorrow. Our partnership builds on a comprehensive Malaysia-UNESCO cooperation program that focuses on South-South cooperation for capacity building in education, culture, and the sciences for least developed countries, small island developing states, and especially African countries. This highlights Malaysia's determination to share its experience with its neighbors, to show its solidarity towards the others, and to work with the members of ASEAN. This is especially important nowadays, as ASEAN itself deepens, and further afield across the developing world. This, I believe, reflects deeply values that are deeply embedded in Malaysian society, the values of human dignity, in human rights. These are foundations for building a more peaceful and sustainable century ahead. We face nowadays many challenges, but the solutions are there. They lie with people. They lie with the creativity and imagination of women and men. And I believe they lie with you here in this auditorium. Solutions must be nurtured in the capacities of every young boy and girl, of every woman and man, to realize their rights fully. And this is the base for a new humanism. This is why education is so important 
and why solidarity must start with young minds. In the words of the Malaysian saying, Kalau Meluntur Bulo, Bialar Wakturi Bong. I'm not sure I said it right. <laughs> and I will say it in English to be more understandable, maybe. <laughs> to bend the bamboo, start when it's still a shoot. To craft a new humanism for the century ahead, we must begin in schools, in university, and all throughout life. This is the social responsibility of education, to open the minds of young women and men, to strengthen their voices, to give them tools to participate in and shape the direction of their societies and economies. Here again, the University of Malaya is leading from the front when it established the first UNESCO club in Malaysia in 2007. And I'm so pleased to sign a certificate today on creating the Malaysia University UNESCO Club, bringing together all UNESCO clubs throughout the country. So, my dear young friends, each of you today is a force for positive change. Each of you gives me hope and certainty that we will build a better future for all, together. I wish to thank each one of you for that ambition and for this commitment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Her Excellency. Indeed, the lecture has been very insightful, and I'm very sure that all of us benefit from Her Excellency's lecture. We have now come to the end of the program. To Her Excellency again, it has been a great pleasure and utmost honor for your time today with us. On behalf of the University of Malaya, please accept our warmest gratitude and our deep appreciation. We really hope that you will come again to this university. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. <coughs> Announcing the departure of Her Excellency Madam Irina Bokova, accompanied by our distinguished guest.